time in Shropshire visiting the Farm of the Future, where a whole host of research companies and universities use their facilities here to see how they can transform the world of agriculture using technology and how it can benefit us, the animals and planet Earth. If you're going to work 100 acres of land, as they do here, you're going to need a tractor at some point. And here it just so happens they have a self-driving one, because why not? So I've come across autonomous cars before. This is obviously an autonomous tractor. Is it using the same technology? Uh, very similar. Uh, we mostly rely on GPS to guide the vehicle, but we do use things like LiDARs for safety on the front of the machine. LiDAR uses lasers to scan for obstructions in the field, and the GPS is so accurate it can position the tractor to within 20 millimetres. We're running it on a completely standard commercial tractor, an Izeki TG. You can buy this tractor, and then we've basically retrofitted it with the, with the autonomous technology. We've got a combine harvester that also runs on this, so we can complete the full cropping cycle. Is this on the market now? It's a sort of pre-production prototype, but with the aim to go to market in the next two or three years. A new breed of smaller, lighter, autonomous tractors like these means we can get rid of the existing hefty ones that can weigh over 20 tonnes and risk damaging the land. Um, at the moment, we're always in the field because this is a prototype, but the, the, the idea is one day you'll do that all from the farm office. Wow. Get out into the field, set your tractor up, go home and uh, do your paperwork. Soon we could be seeing fields filled with these clean, green farming machines. My next stop is the solar-powered cow shed, where robots are taking over some aspects of cow stockmanship. Head of Dairy Duncan is in charge here, and first up, he's showing off his fancy robot milker. This fully automated milking machine does exactly what it says on the tin. Cows are queuing up for this. It's, a, it's completely right. voluntary. You're not ushering them in. No, with the robotics, they can choose when they get to be milked. And a cow that chooses when to be milked, rather than being forced, is much less stressed and produces more milk. The beauty of the robotic system is that some cows can be milked as many as five times a day. Duncan, here comes a cow now. She's making her way in. The robot knows exactly which cow it is because the cows have got a collar with a transponder on it. OK. So it says, I know who this cow is. Yes. I know how much milk she's likely to give, and I also know how much food to give her. And this tag also helps the machine's infrared scanners locate the teats, because, like us humans, not all cows are the same. The farmer can monitor everything remotely via an app, even if they're not here in the barn, and the machine will also give you information on the quality of the milk and condition of the cow. And they also have a high-tech way of keeping the cow feed in tip-top condition too. So this is how much a cow eats in a day. What have we got here? This is uh, their mixed ration, so it's a really carefully formulated diet for them. This little gadget uses infrared beams to measure the water content of the feed. Too wet and the nutrients get diluted, too dry and it becomes too crumbly. The ideal water content is 40%. The scan we've just done shows that it's 37.8%. OK, so we could add a little bit more. Yeah. We don't want you girls going hungry or thirsty, at that matter. <laughs> Once the feed has been deemed edible, another small robot starts pushing it towards the cows to make sure they can always reach their grub and that nothing goes to waste. Once the cows are fed and milk, it's no surprise there's a bit of a mess in the shed and it's robots to the rescue yet again. Meet the slurry scraper. The clues in the name. This looks after the dirty work of cleaning up the bovine ablutions. It's powered by batteries and it holds 100 litres of water. When it runs out of power or liquid, it will automatically charge and fill itself back up again. It uses a combination of floor-mounted radio frequency transponders and proximity sensors to make its way around the shed and avoid any sudden obstacles. You know, like a 600 kilo cow. Another way they take care of their herd is using health trackers. So I noticed that Spotty is wearing some kind of Fitbit or wearable on her leg here. Now, this is a really cool device, this. So we don't necessarily count the number of steps, but what we are interested in is a, a deviation from that individual cow's normal behaviour. This cow tracker can pick up if a cow is feeling frisky and want to mate, or conversely, if one is feeling poorly and not moving around as much as she should. Next, I want to take a look at how they maintain the quality of the crops remotely using drones. One of the companies here has developed an app that works with this drone to check on the crop quality and weed ratios of the fields as it flies overhead. 
So this is Skippy Scout, and essentially it's sending the drone into the field and it's telling it where to fly based on input from the farmer, and it can do it a lot faster than someone would be able to do walking on foot. In this field in particular, it's a very weed-heavy field. It's about the right time of year where we've got lots of weeds popping up, and we can use this system to spot where those weeds are and relay that information straight back to the farmer. Shall we give it a whirl? Let's do it. Let's step back over here. Yeah. Just tap fly now. OK, very simple. Oh, we're off already. Yep, so it'll climb to about 15 metres. Yep. And at 15 metres, it will fly to the first point in the field that's been marked. And at that point, it will descend down and take its first photo, essentially. It knows where to fly thanks to waypoints programmed in prior to the flight. Oh, look, there it goes down. It's using the sensors on the bottom of the drone to measure when it gets to about two metres above the crop. Yep. And at that point, it'll take a photo and make a beep. Yep. And registered. Then it'll climb back up and move to the next point. The drone then beams the photo straight back to your tablet or smartphone and artificial intelligence flags up any potential issues within the crops. So I suppose now the farmer needs to go and get his tractor to go and spray the weeds that we've just identified. Actually, no, we don't need a tractor anymore. We have a, a different solution. This is the DJI Agris and it feels the need, the need for weeds. This is what I sort of imagined when someone says smart farming and what drones should look like whilst they're smart farming. Once you've programmed your weed locations from the scouting drone into this one, it'll fly directly to those points and exterminate them. Perfect for areas that you don't necessarily want to lose a, well, use a large sprayer system. You're not sort of covering a whole field in pesticide. Not and, at all. And it's a greener solution. It could be the greenest solution of operating any agrochemical in the environment. Yeah, absolutely. Over the past few years, we've seen automation introduced in almost every area of life. And the agricultural innovations that I've seen here today really are outstanding in their field.